Good evening. Good evening. We welcome all our parishioners, guests, and visitors to St. Dominic Church as we celebrate the third weekend of Advent. During this third week, may we remember with joy that our wait for the Christ child is nearly over. As John came to testify to the light, can we also testify to our belief in Christ through thoughtful care for others in word and deed? We never give up the joy of caring. As we continue to wear masks for our own safety and those around us, we are reminded to social distance when in the communion line and especially when leaving church. During these times of COVID, communion will be distributed only in the hand. If you require something different than this, please see the priest after mass. This mass is offered for the intention of Jim and Millie LaCroix, 50th wedding anniversary, and Bernita Keys and Romy Keys. Our opening song is Ready the Way, verse 1. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Today, as we said before, our theme is joy, but it is Gadate Sunday, which means rejoice. We take a little time with our readings to reflect on what it means. Our first reading today, though, it's all about our sin. But the anecdote is the one who comes, and that's who is being foretold. Now, let us light our second uh, candle, or our third candle, the pink one, for our rejoicing as we celebrate our Advent season. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my own fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with sol solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, 
to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, in my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adored with a diadem, like a bride bedeckled with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent, and they asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you who you do not recognize the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. It's the gospel of the Lord. I think we as human beings, we have this propensity to make our ordinary setbacks in life into real cosmic tragedies and cosmic dramas. There's one thing I notice in life, when where there's drama, there's not going to be any joy in life. Advent, it's just a wonderful time for us to reflect and root out the causes of the dramas of our lives. We have to admit something, though. We have to admit that God made us to be... Um, dependent on him and not self-reliant. The weekend, this weekend, we focus on joy and what it means. Rejoice! Rejoice Sunday. But I really want to focus on what steals our joy from us. What steals our joy so we can prevent that from happening? Now, as a priest, over the years I've wandered around the playgrounds on the places I was, and I saw a lot of sad faces occasionally. And I'd, I would just go up and ask the kids, hey, what's going on here today? And uh, kids would say, oh, just a bunch of drama going on. I think they like to use that, middle school girls especially, like that phrase, drama. Watch adults on reality TV show. Watch them on court shows. Dr. Phil, you see drama. You see drama in life. How about us? Do we live our lives or does drama affect them? Is drama stealing joy from your life? Conflict with others, work, school, friends, that usually tends to be one of the biggest points. Hope and peace, that was our theme two, for the last two weeks. The tradition of Third Sunday is always rejoice, rejoice Sunday, but we're just using joy, same thing. Joy, rejoice. The message of joy from God. In our first reading, as I mentioned earlier, is really from the prophet Isaiah. He announces just that. You know what? There's going to be some joy going on here. And Jesus reads this passage of Isaiah at the synagogue. It's the opening thing he did in his ministry. He read from this passage. And then he said something to the people in the synagogue. He said, today, this passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And what happened, if you remember, in that gospel passage? They took him out, led him up to the hill. They were going to throw him off. Throw him off the cliff for reading that. Because he said, this passage is fulfilled in your hearing. He told the people, I am the one from Isaiah promised to you. And what did Isaiah say? Jesus said, first, I bring glad tidings to the poor. That was his message. This is not the economically poor he's talking about. We have nothing but economically poor in the world. 
but he brings glad tidings to the spiritually poor. That is what he wants to, people to know. See, economic poor, that's temporary. But spiritual poverty lasts, it can last into eternity. It has eternal consequences. That's why Jesus came. He had to come to eliminate the spiritually poverty in the world. That's what it's about. Secondly, he came to destroy sin, of course, to bring glad tidings to the poor, but to heal the brokenhearted is what he says next. God created us with a heart for God. That was how we were created, so we could live in relationship with God. That takes a heart thing to be in tune with the Savior and to heal the brokenhearted. See, what did sin do? Sin ripped the relationship between us and God. Jesus came to restore that, our relationships. We're all broken with sin, still are. We have to heal them all the time. Have you ever evaluated your sins? And what was the underlying cause? Cause is usually an unhealthy relationship. And it's a broken heart between us and how we feel about others. How we judge and how we condemn, how we see others maybe lustfully using them. The drama of life, like on those playgrounds. The drama breaks the heart. God came to repair it. That is what Jesus' mission was, to repair these things. Jesus said, I come to bring liberty to the captives and set the prisoners free. That doesn't mean he's here to clear the jails. He's here to set us free from the prison of sin. That's why he came into the world. Because we're all incarcerated by our sin in one way or another. See, captivity is a biblical metaphor for sin. Sin's often self imposed prison for us. The guilt, the self loathing. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like that at all, Jesus says. And Jesus announces a year of favor. Now is the time for joy. See, it is sin that pulls us away from God and compromises our hearts. The message of joy this weekend is that Jesus comes to restore the friendship with God. And only Jesus can do that. That is what the birth of Christ means. That's what we are shooting for in less than two weeks. While we are sinners, we are in prison and sin is a prison. Ask any addict. They are absolutely a prisoner to their sin. But in two weeks we commemorate the birth of Jesus our Savior. The birth of the one who releases us from every prison door in our hearts. So, we ask the question, can we find a way to rejoice? Can we find joy in our hearts? Knowing that that's why Jesus came into the world, to heal us of all the nonsense in our lives. That is what we have, and that is where we can find some joy in our lives. Now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God.
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess that in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life in the world to come. And trusting in God's goodness, we now place our petitions before him for us and for the whole world. For our church to find ways to joyfully seek out those who have lost faith, the marginalized, the immigrant, and the youth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders to work together to forge a lasting peace, for an end to war and terrorism, with joy we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are reminded of difficult events and emotions during this season of joy, that they may find comfort and peace in their reassurance of Jesus' love, with joy we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the babies served through Mary's room, and for those new mothers who are less fortunate in our community, with joy we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Sheboygan North parishioners to welcome the diversity of gifts, temperaments, personalities, and cultures that enrich our community, with joy we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are unable to worship worship with us due to illness or the pandemic. For those who died this week from our Sheboygan North Parish community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our community book of prayers, for the intention of Jim and Millie LaCroix's 50th wedding anniversary, and for the repose of the souls of Bernita Keys and Romy Keys, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer and for the prayers we hold in our hearts. With joy we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, we ask you to hear these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord, we pray. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, 
The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until Will you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Dominic, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. people formed by divine teaching. Let us dare say the words our Savior gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. We all now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. So Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. And be healed the body and the blood of Christ. Bring us to everlasting life.
Next week, as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, we are asked to bring items that will meet the needs of refugee and immigrants. A list of suggested items will be listed, are listed actually, on the Tree of Hope flyer and is also included on the front cover of today's bulletin. Please place your items by the Tree of Hope in the atrium next weekend. Christmas memorial flower donation envelopes can be placed in the collection or dropped off or mailed to the office. Our Environment Committee relies on your memorial donations to adorn the church for the Christmas season. Envelopes are available in the parish office if you need one. A limited supply of calendars for the 2021 year, courtesy of Reinbold Novak Funeral Home, are available on a table in the gathering space. And if you missed out on participating in Father Mark's Christmas card project, we have a limited number of packets available in the gathering space. Please pick up a packet to send a card to a fellow parishioner. And lastly, the Christmas schedule of Masses at our parishes is printed in the bulletin. In addition to the regular usher, Eucharistic minister, and server ministries for which many have volunteered for, please remember that we also need sanitizers to help clean the pews at all of our Masses. If you know which Mass you will be attending, and you are able to help out for about 15 minutes after the masses, the Christmas Masses, please check out the Sign Up Genius near the table of our web, near the, near the top of the website table, or call the parish office. It would be nice if we did not have to ask for sanitizers at the end of each Christmas Mass. Um, we're also going to start preparing you for uh, Christmas Masses. Um, there's a real threat that there might not be room at the inn on, uh, on Christmas Eve Masses. We've doubled the amount of Masses, basically. Um, but, you know, we have to keep every other pew, and those Masses were already overflowed to capacity. Please consider and pray about what Mass you want to attend. We do have uh, Christmas Day Masses also at 10 o'clock at Holy Name. Um, but uh, there's a 3 and a 5 o'clock Mass here. Normally it's just the 6. Um, but uh, know that uh, we could have overflowed crowds and we still have to remain vigilant about this. We are so close to the end, people, with the vaccine and everything. Let us not uh, make Christmas a time of tragedy, but make it a time of joy for us as we uh, um, celebrate. But please consider what other masses there are. Like I said, there's uh, lots of options out there for us. Don't be married to the 3 o'clock mass on uh, Christmas um, afternoon or the five o'clock. Uh, there's um, other ones too. We have to space it out the best we possibly can. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his second coming again, sanctify you with the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with this blessing. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Let the church say amen. amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Let the church say amen. amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, this Mass. Is ended. Thanks. Thanks. As we go forth in joy, let us sing, sing out earth and skies. Come, O oh God of all the earth, come to us, so righteous one. Come and bring our love to birth in the glory of your Son. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you, raise your joy.
joyful cry, dance to the life around.